Hello, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe video. We have we have quite a, a bit to go through here uh, today. I'm going to try to just get right into it, if you don't mind. Uh, market is actually open right now, and there's kind of a lot of things going, and I uh, needed to get this done. Um, but Thursday, and the market's been kind of back and forth a little, up and down, and and uh, yet really this week has been the most volatile week in the markets we've had in quite some time, and I'm pretty pretty happy about that. Um, we've we've really desired to see some more normalcy uh, in the markets and some indication that we haven't totally lost our minds. And what I mean by that is when markets don't fluctuate, when there isn't volatility, when there is just complete um, lack of of any reservation, it tends to indicate some degree of complacency or even apathy about risk, and that generally does not end well. So I do think things remain a bit euphoric and a bit overly optimistic in the short term. Uh, but when you see uh, the market drop 1% to 2% as it did Monday, Tuesday, I think that's a healthy sign. It's still not very significant volatility. January has ended. I have a lot of work to do to sort of digest the final month-end numbers. But basically, markets had been up. S&P 500 and the Dow had been up over... Uh, seven percent on the month, and and basically ended the month up what's called five and a half percent. So giving back one to two percent in the last couple of days is not really all that big of a deal when you consider the fact that we were starting off uh, up so dramatically. It ended up being you know one of the biggest months in in the market in a long long time, one of the biggest Januarys ever. So we're going to process more of the entire month of January at Advice and Insights podcast uh, tomorrow because I still kind of need a day to sort of bring it in and give you the, the down low. So go to the podcast uh, to get a rather exhaustive, like a 30-minute summary of all things markets January uh, in the next day or so. Uh, well, actually, by the time you're listening to it, it'll already be up. So there you go. Um, a big theme right now, something I want you to be thinking about, is this idea of the way in which an investor wants to be positioned based on what it is that might go wrong, what the risk is. Markets do not go down for one reason. Portfolio values do not become challenged for only one reason. There are a plethora of different things that could... Uh, create a more stressful um, environment for managing risk assets. Essentially, at the end of the day, it really does amount to earnings, uh, but to the degree that um, earnings are, are growing and valuations are, are shrinking, it usually would be because we're going into a more inflationary environment where uh, the market has to discount the fact that, yes, earnings are moving higher, but they're going to be worth less in the future because of the negative impact of inflation. The other piece, of course, would just be flat out slowing of growth, earnings themselves actually contracting. Uh, and then you have kind of an environment where um, uh, inflation, you, you basically have sort of two knobs to turn. There's growth versus not growth and inflation versus disinflation. And, and this is well known to economists, well known to market people. I don't, I don't uh, talk in this framework very often, but primarily because we've really mostly been in a disinflationary environment uh, for a very long time, if not really for the bulk of my investing life. Um, and the, the variable has been the growth side. Uh, obviously, 2007, 2008, 2009 were, were contracting growth through the Great Recession. So you had disinflation combined with recession. And uh, then since then, we've had continued disinflation, but actual uh, forward-moving growth. And, and you have an entirely different environment when you have inflation versus disinflation, and then again, either growth or shrinking. Now, inflation with a shrinking economy 
we haven't had since the 1970s, and we call it stagflation, and a lot of us remember exactly, those, I remember it historically, having studied it. I didn't invest through that period, obviously. A lot of you probably did. But the reality is, is that it's brutal, brutal. Um, I suspect that right now investors have to decide if they believe the risk they want to start to kind of defend against is one in which inflation begins to creep in, but growth continues, because there is a risk out of the impact of inflation, even if we're in a pro-growth environment, or are people worried about the growth actually reversing? So perhaps we're in inflation, perhaps we're in deflation, but the growth itself is shrinking. I don't believe very many people are actually forecasting that or, or worried about that. Um, and yet that's probably what most people are becoming defensive around. We would suggest that the more likely catalyst to market turmoil will not be on the earnings and growth side, but on the inflation side. That some modest alteration or rotation from a disinflationary paradigm to a more inflationary one uh, may be the risk that equity investors have to more deal with, even as growth continues. And in that environment, it speaks uh, significantly to our belief around growing dividend type stocks. Uh, I think the emerging markets do quite well in that environment. And even a more commodity centered type uh, situation. We don't really like buying the commodities directly, but maybe companies that are somewhat levered to, to uh, commodities. Um, I am not predicting that we're going in that environment, but I am saying very clearly that a lack of thoughtfulness and a lack of intentionality about what risks people are positioning for and defending against is a very bad idea. I don't think you're going to find that a lot of advisors are thinking this way because most just think we want to be positioned for when things go up and then we want to defend against when things go down without maybe a, a more comprehensive understanding of the macro economics that go therewith. So that's a lot of what is on our mind right now. I'm going to actually write an article on this subject at Market Epicurean, um, but it will be a little bit deeper dive, a little bit more complicated of a subject. Um, so it may not be for all of you, but it's something I want to be able to put some, out uh, some content on to help inform you as to what these different paradigms look like historically and then where we want to be going forward. I hope that's helpful. I wouldn't give any thought really at all to this particular week in the markets. Uh, you know, 500 points is kind of a lot of points, but um, the market's at 26,000 now, not 16,000. So it's it's really a, the impact of 500 points is a lot different than it used to be. And then markets kind of stabilized right after that. So look, the 10-year bond yield is at a four-year high today, about two point. I'll give you the right number here, 2.74%, okay? So essentially, um, I think you just have a reallocation of risk-reward going on. It's very healthy, and it plays into our theme of rotation throughout the year. You want to see investors acting rationally. And a rebalancing with higher yields in the bond market and, and trimming profits in the stock market, that rebalancing is a very healthy thing to do. We don't think people are doing enough of it, but it does create some price volatility along the way. That's kind of where we're at. Um, Super Bowl weekend, enjoy the game. Uh, so advice and insights podcast if you want to hear a real thorough take on January. I will have this Market Epicurean article on uh, defensive positioning uh, probably next week. Reach out with any questions. Send an email to Bonson Group at HightowerAdvisors.com. We're going to do a special podcast in a week or two. We're going to collect, you know, a lot of questions from listeners, viewers, readers, and just address them directly in the podcast. So send that, that question, anything you want, any question you have you want us to address, Bonson Group at HightowerAdvisors.com. I got to leave it there. Thanks for watching the video here this week of, of Dividend Cafe. Look forward to being with you again next week.